I can already see it. It's just a normal day when suddenly the unthinkable happens. You look up into the sky and let out a shriek of sheer terror as you realize what has just transpired. The panic of the people around you is almost instantaneous, but you, you remain calm. Because even as the world crumbles around you, you know that you are safe. Because you watched this video and built yourself a bunker made out of Lego, strong enough to withstand any force that man could possibly muster. Aside from the one obvious exception, of course. Nothing could possibly stop that. So, yeah, theoretically, you totally could build yourself a bunker made out of Lego bricks strong enough to repel nuclear radiation, if you really wanted to. I mean, I would definitely recommend using something else first if you were going to build a bunker, but that's no fun. Calculating the answers to stupid questions is a much better use of the precious and finite amount of time that you've been allotted in life. So, without further ado, how much Lego to insulate yourself from the radiation of a nuclear blast? The answer is probably going to surprise you. First things first, there are three different types of radiation. Gamma, Beta, and Alpha. Alpha is by far the weakest. Your average piece of paper is enough to stop it. On the flip side of that, Gamma Rays are terrifyingly powerful. These are the most dangerous ones, and these are the ones that you want to block out. If you can block out the Gamma Rays, then automatically you're safe from Alpha and Beta, so we're only going to worry about Gamma Rays in this video because... By worrying about gamma rays, we have already taken care of the other things. So, how do you block out gamma rays? Well, you do it with stuff. Specifically, a lot of stuff. That's because matter has a tendency to absorb radiation, and the more stuff you can put between yourself and said radiation, then the less radiation gets to you. Of course, not all stuff is created equal. Something like lead is going to be a lot better at blocking out radiation than, say, air, for example. There's your stupidly obvious fact of the day for you. Now, there's this really nice quantity known as the attenuation coefficient, that is basically a way to quantify how good something is at blocking out radiation. Lead can have an attenuation coefficient of several thousand or tens of thousands, depending on the context, while the coefficient for air is much less than one. Now, because I'm lazy, I decided to ask ChatGPT what the attenuation constant for ABS plastic is, because Chat can search the web a lot faster than I can. And so once it started going, it spat out between 10 and 20 inverse meters. Now, I have no idea how correct this is, but I'm not really taking this video too seriously. It's about how to build a nuclear bunker out of Lego. I'm just going to take the 10 and roll with it. Anyways, now is a good time to point out that Lego is mostly hollow, which means that we got to do some fancy dancy weighted average stuff that I won't bore you with. Next, let's talk about the actual levels of radiation themselves. Now, depending on the person, you could survive two to three grays of radiation before it kills you. And so just to make sure that we get everybody in here, we're going to say one gray of radiation is the limit. Now, the levels of radiation can vary pretty widely across a blast radius. So, being very lazy again, I asked ChatGPT what the radiation levels near the epicenter are, and it said they are typically at least 50,000 grays for modern nuclear warheads. So, we know the initial intensity, 50,000 grays. We know the intensity that we want to get to, 1 gray. And we know how good at stopping the radiation LEGO actually is. So, there's this nice little equation here that we can use. This is where the numbers will go in that equation. And then we can solve for T, which is the thickness of the material, and get that we need a wall of LEGO 5.41 meters thick. Or just shy of 18 feet. If you want that to be big enough to stand behind, I figure that 2 meters tall and 2 meters wide will do the trick for just about anybody on the planet. 
sorry Shaq, I forgot about you, but I've already made the animation, so it looks like you're getting a radiation dose to the head. <laughs> Anyways, to achieve those dimensions, that will take approximately 8,830,252 by 2 bricks. At 13 cents a brick, that's just over a million dollars for your radiation wall of Lego. Um, excuse me, Mr. Crazy Dog, I hear you say. Are you implying that all you need to protect you from a nuclear blast is this? That just doesn't seem right. Well, Steven, I say, assuming that your name is Steven, it doesn't seem right because it isn't right. All of what we just did was figuring out how much Lego you would need to protect you from the radiation levels. And, well, chances are that your Lego wall would be completely blown away in a matter of mere seconds, and you would be re-exposed to all of the radiation. Really, you have to worry about third-degree burns a lot farther out from the epicenter than you do the radiation. If anything, your Lego wall would get all melty and you'd turn into some kind of a terrifying melted Lego man monster thing. The only way that your Lego wall is going to protect you from the blast is if you're not even in the range of the blast itself. I mean, it's Lego. Like, what did you expect? If you go back through the video, you'll notice that I've made a point of specifying radiation anytime I can. I mean, we're talking about temperatures that you can only find in nature inside of stars. So, sure, a Lego wall thick enough could theoretically protect you from the radiation levels, but it's not going to do much when it's a melted mess. If anything, the point of this video is to emphasize that, while, well, yeah, the radiation is scary, if you find yourself in one of these, it is not going to be at the top of your list of concerns. And also that if you work in a radiology department, then you could totally spend a few hundred grand to replace all of your walls with Lego bricks if you really wanted to. Now that would be a publicity stunt. Anyways, like I said earlier, I wasn't taking this video too seriously, and you probably shouldn't either. I'm guessing that there's quite a few things in here that I got wrong, and if you know any of them, then feel free to correct me in the comments below. Um, I would definitely appreciate it, actually. It makes it a better viewing experience for everybody, but yeah, thanks for watching to the end.